You what is up budget billers? My name is Trail and we have a vote in Washington towards the infrastructure bill. But this is not the final vote, guys. This is just one of the procedural votes that they typically have in order to pass legislation. However, Nancy Pelosi is using a different strategy to help with the ensuring that the budget resolution bill will pass. It gets kind of confusing for some people, so I wanted to explain exactly what's happening right now in Washington. So so far, it looks like we won't be receiving a stimulus check in the month of August as we are slated for both of these bills, the fiscal infrastructure bill and the budget resolution bill, to be passed sometime in September. But luckily, that's just a few days away. Also, guys, we have some crazy news going on out there in regards to President Biden being impeached. We have more vaccine banning in one state. And then I have some sad news that I want to share with you today. And all of that is going to be in our daily news bites but before we get started hey if this is your first time to the channel hey welcome and glad to have you on this channel we talk about finance real estate credit cards bitcoin and crypto and stimulus update news so if you're interested in any of those go ahead and hit the subscribe button for me that way you can join our community also if you end up liking the content in this video or even laughing at one of my jokes then be sure to like this video other than that guys hey let's go ahead and jump right into the video okay guys what's going on outside of this vote that they had in washington on tuesday night on this vote on this vote the yeas are 220 the nays are 212 the resolution is adopted without objection the motion to reconsider is laid on the table yes yes the house has officially passed the 3.5 trillion dollar budget resolution bill but this is not the final bill guys this is not the final bill this is just one of the initial votes that they have to have in order to push this bill through legislation lawmakers always have a series of votes that they have to have prior to officially passing legislation now let me go ahead and explain this to you guys this is typically not how things are done in washington so it can get confusing with trying to understand what's going on on. So let me back up a few steps. Before both chambers of Congress went on their August recess break, they were able to vote and successfully pass the physical infrastructure bill, which is the bipartisan bill. They had several votes in the Senate and they finally passed that bill before they left Washington. That bill was then sent on over to the House for their vote on the bill. However, Nancy Pelosi has been telling everyone that she was not willing to bring the bill to the floor for a vote until both infrastructure bills are ready at the same time. Now, most people didn't believe her, but as we have seen, she was very serious. And then nine centrist or moderate Democrats threatened Fancy Nancy that they were going to vote against the budget resolution bill if Nancy Pelosi didn't bring the bipartisan bill for a vote. They want the bipartisan bill to be passed and then signed by the president before the budget resolution bill is passed and that's when Pelosi did it again guys she did it she proposed a new strategy rule that would allow the Democrats to work towards the budget resolution bill before they take up a vote on the bipartisan bill and after one day of stalling with the moderate Democrats they finally came to an agreement to adopt this new strategy which means the Democrats clear the path towards passing the massive $3.5 trillion budget resolution bill. So now the Democrats have approved to approve of the budget resolution bill first and then a vote on the bipartisan bill second. Pelosi said that her and her team will be working on the budget resolution bill and the documentation for it and getting it prepared to send over to the Senate. And they are expecting party leaders to vote on that bill by September the 27th. Now, I will say that I have never seen anything like this before, guys. This is crazy. I know a lot of you have been commenting down below that you are confused about what's going on in Washington and whether we have passed the fourth stimulus package. Well, not just yet, guys. The vote to advance the budget resolution bill forward is what passed, and that's just a preliminary vote, guys, the first vote, which creates a pretty clean path to the final passage of the bill in the House. Fancy Nancy is a slick one, guys, isn't she? I tell you. But this is some good news because 
All of this helps with the completing of the agenda of President Biden, which is the Build Back Better America. But if Biden doesn't straighten some of the other crises out that we have going on right now, he may have a lot more to worry about bigger issues than this Build Back Better plan. Lindsey Graham is calling for President Biden to be impeached. On Tuesday night, Lindsey Graham was speaking with Fox News Hannity Show, and he said President Joe Biden should be impeached over America's withdrawal from Afghanistan. He called it the most dishonorable thing a commander in chief has ever done in modern times. And I do believe, and, and I don't say this lightly, if Joe Biden does this, if he leaves a bunch of people behind who helped us, he deserves to be impeached. That would be a high crime and misdemeanor under our Constitution. Joe needs to go if he does this. Graham said that this makes it very hard to fight future wars. Who's going to help us in the future after we have abandoned our friends in Afghanistan who fought bravely? Also, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene introduced a trio of impeachment resolutions against President Biden on this past Friday, calling for him to be removed from office over his handling of the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan and some other alleged offenses. She accused President Biden of dereclation of duty following the Taliban's takeover, alleging he failed to secure the extraction of thousands of American civilians and Afghan allies and armed our enemies by leaving U.S. military equipment in the country. Green also introduced resolutions targeting Biden's handling of the crisis at the southern border. Now, keep in mind that both Lindsey Graham and Marjorie Greene are huge Trump supporters, so with them calling this impeachment of Biden, it doesn't surprise me. Do I think it is warranted for him to be impeached? Well, I think that he does deserve a chance to pull everyone out of that area first, which he has a short window to do that, guys. So, which Biden announced yesterday that he plans to have everyone evacuated out of Afghanistan by August the 31st, which is like in six days or so, which is really not a lot of time to get this accomplished. The bipartisan House Problem Solvers Caucus called on Biden to extend his withdrawal deadline past August 31st, but Biden said he wants to keep that date because the sooner that we can get everyone evacuated, the better off we are. So it's going to be a tough task to get it done, but the Biden administration is not releasing key details on how they plan on doing it. So we can expect to see some news regarding this over the next few days. In reality, this is the time for Biden to shine right here. Maybe that will help with him bringing his approval ratings back up a bit, but it still won't stop the impeachment discussions from the Republican Party. Texas Governor Greg Abbott was tested positive for the virus last week and he has been quarantining for about 10 days. He has been fully vaccinated by the way, which he stated that his symptoms are very mild. Just days after the Pfizer vaccine received its full approval from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, he is now banning any state or local government entity from issuing vaccine mandates. It's crazy because he actually tweeted that he was told that his infection was brief and mild because of his vaccination that he received, but he is banning from making it mandatory of others? Yeah, I guess. Cruise ships are in the news lately, which I have a sad story to mention to you guys. A woman on a cruise ship out of Texas on a Carnival Cruises tested positive for the virus. She was fully vaccinated, by the way, but she ended up being dropped off in Brazil because she had contracted the virus, where she ended up dying from COVID. She was 77 years old. Also, Allen, Texas football program is one of the largest in the U.S. and one of their assistance football coaches ended up dying this weekend to COVID. He had been battling COVID for about two and a half weeks. He was not vaccinated for his own personal reasons. He was 56 years old. So I know those were not the best stories, but it goes to show you guys that COVID is real and it is actively affecting lives. Make your own choice for you and your family. I am vaccinated myself in case you were interested in knowing, but I respect the wishes of each and every one of you out there. Anyways, guys, hey, that's all I have for you 
today. This has been another fourth stimulus check update. If you enjoy any of this information or found it to be useful, be sure to hit the like button for me. It definitely helps out a lot and it also tells YouTube to share this video with others. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button for me so that you can be a part of this community and hit the notification bell to be notified of each new video. Again, as always, hey, I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching and I hope to see you on the next video.